Have you heard of neuropathic pain and nociplastic pain? So what are these types of pain? How different are they? Let's talk about neuropathic pain and nociplastic pain today. If you are a physician or a healthcare professional that helps people with chronic pain and you want to make a better diagnosis between neuropathic and nociplastic pain, I will give you this free one page that is my summary. This is how I teach my medical students, my residents to differentiate between neuropathic and nociplastic pain. Go to the description of this video below and there is a link for you and you can download this one page for free. I talk about what are the causes, how different causes uh, for neuropathic and nociplastic pain, the symptoms, localization, the signs, mood, sleep, what the pain responds to, what previous treatments they may have tried, response to injections and nerve blocks, response to exercise, if the person has adverse childhood experiences or current stressful situations. So go to the description, click on the link there and download this if you are a healthcare professional. Neuropathic pain and nociplastic pain are two distinct mechanisms of pain. There are some people that even mix these terms and say neuroplastic pain, but I'll follow the classification of pain by the IASP, the International Association for the Study of Pain. This is a group of scientists and clinicians who reach consensus on the nomenclature of pain. So in the ISP, you will not find the term neuroplastic pain, which as far as I know, is used as a synonym for nociplastic pain. So let's stick to the two terms defined by the ISP, neuropathic and nociplastic pain. There is a third mechanism of pain called nociceptive pain, but I will not talk about it today. If you want to learn about these three mechanisms of pain, watch my other video. Understanding the differences between neuropathic and nociplastic pain is crucial for an accurate diagnosis and an appropriate treatment. There are people who have mixed mechanisms of pain, and this is even more important to have an accurate diagnosis. Let's start with neuropathic pain. Neuropathic pain is when there is a damage or dysfunction of the nervous system itself. This could be in the nerves, either in the peripheral nerve system, PNS, or in the central nerve system, CNS. The peripheral nerve system consists of the nerves that exit from the brain and the spinal cord. They carry information from the periphery to the spinal cord and the brain, and they also transmit orders from the brain to the muscles in the periphery or the organs in our trunk. The peripheral nerve system is subdivided into the somatic and the autonomic nerve systems. Common causes of neuropathic pain affecting the peripheral nerve system include a nerve compression, for example, carpal tunnel syndrome, or a foot drop caused by a fibular nerve injury close to the knee. There are also metabolic diseases that affect the peripheral nerves, for example, diabetes, diabetes-related nerve damage or alcohol-related nerve damage, or vitamins, vitamin deficiency like vitamin B12, and viral infections like herpes zoster or shingles. When the peripheral nerve system is affected, we call this peripheral neuropathy. Neuropathic pain can also be caused by lesions in the central nerve system, which comprises the brain and the spinal cord. Diseases or lesions in the brain like Parkinson's disease, stroke, multiple sclerosis, they can all cause neuropathic pain. And if there is a lesion or disease in the spinal cord, like a paraplegia, quadriplegia, an infection or a tumor compressing, compressing the spinal cord, the person may also have neuropathic pain. Neuropathic pain is often described as shooting, burning, tingling, or electrical shocks like sensations and may be accompanied by numbness or weakness in the affected area. On the other hand, nociplastic pain is a type of chronic pain that occurs when there is a change in the way pain signals are processed within the nervous system. It involves neuroplasticity. 
Unlike neuropathic pain, there is no direct damage to the nerves themselves. Instead, nociplastic pain results from a heightened sensitivity and altered pain processing in the CNS, central nervous system. This can be due to various factors such as changes in the neurotransmitter levels or abnormal functioning of pain modulating pathways. We know conditions like fibromyalgia, complex regional pain syndrome, CRPS, tension type headaches, migraines are examples of nociplastic pain. The pain is usually described as deep, aching, diffuse, affecting multiple areas of the body. There are areas of hypersensitivity and the person will also have other symptoms like a brain fog, mental and physical fatigue, poor sleep, low mood. So distinguishing between neuropathic pain and nociplastic pain can be challenging since both conditions share some common symptoms and patients often experience mixed pain components. However, certain characteristics can help clinicians differentiate between the two. For example, the underlying mechanism. Neuropathic pain is caused by a direct and distinguishable nerve system damage or disease, while nociplastic pain results from a altered pain processing in the central nerve system without nerve damage. When there is a distinguishable nerve system damage or disease, there will also be other signs and symptoms like a paralysis or altered sensations. The other thing is pain description. Neuropathic pain is typically associated with a specific nerve-related sensation like a burning and electrical shock, while nociplastic pain is described as a deep, aching or widespread pain and it's hard to localize. What about the clinical presentation? Neuropathic pain often follows a dermatomal pattern, a specific nerve distribution or a peripheral nerve distribution, whereas nociplastic pain is more diffuse and less specific in its distribution. What about diagnostic tests? Neuropathic pain there are diagnosing often involves conducting a nerve conduction study or electromyography MG. In this case, the nerve conduction study measures the speed and the strength of the electrical signals transmitted through the nerves. EMG assesses the electrical activity of the muscles and can help identifying nerve-related abnormalities. Additionally, imaging tests such as magnetic resonance imaging MRI or computed tomography CT scans may be used to visualize potential nerve compressions or structural abnormalities. But in nociplastic pain, diagnosing nociplastic pain primarily relies on clinical evaluation and the exclusion of other potential causes of pain. There are no specific diagnostic tests for nociplastic pain since it involves alterations in the pain processing within the CNS rather than observable nerve damage. If you like this video so far, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Let's talk about treatments for both neuropathic and nociplastic pain. They typically involve a multidisciplinary approach. The treatment for neuropathic pain generally involves medications and we use medications that are antiepileptics or anticonvulsants like gabapentin or pregabalin. We may also use antidepressants like amitriptyline, nortriptyline, dezipramine, duloxetine or venlafaxine. Watch my other videos here about gabapentin, pregabalin, amitriptyline, duloxetine. We may also recommend the person to practice mind-body interventions as they help to reduce the sympathetic drive of the autonomic nerve system, therefore reducing the adrenaline and cortisol, which are the stress hormones. Non-pharmacological interventions like cognitive behavior therapy, physical therapy, and relaxation techniques can be beneficial for both types of pain, neuropathic and nociplastic pain. What about exercises? 
Are they good for neuropathic or nociplastic pain? Well, before I give you the answer to that question, I'd like to tell you that I have lots of handouts about exercises on my website and videos on this channel. If you want to download all of these handouts, just go to my website, become a member and download them. It's all free. The website is www.drandreafurlan.com. Go to the tab about pain on the top and download them. Well, exercise are recommended for both neuropathic and osteoplastic pain as they help to release endogenous opioids, cannabinoids, serotonin, and dopamine in the brain's inner pharmacy. Watch my other video here to learn more about the brain's inner pharmacy. Exercises also help to release the muscle tension and the development of trigger points in the muscles, which then causes myofascial pain. Muscle pain usually superimposes other kinds of pains. If a person has a neuropathic or nociplastic pain, the body will tend to protect that area. And the body does this by tensing the muscles. So that's why exercise is good. Remember, motion is lotion. So neuropathic pain and nociplastic pain represent two distinct mechanisms of chronic pain. Understanding these differences is essential for accurate diagnosis and tailoring the effective treatment strategies for patients who are suffering from these challenging conditions. Please remember that this video is not intended to provide medical advice. If you have chronic pain, please ask your doctor to make a proper diagnosis. This video is for educational purposes only. And if there is an emergency, please call an ambulance or go to the nearest emergency department. Answer this question in the comments below. Which treatments for neuropathic or nociplastic pain worked for you? Share your thoughts with other people here. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.